Let us pray. Great is the multitude, God of all holiness. Countless the throng that you have assembled from the rich diversity of all earth's children. With your church in glory, your church in this generation lifts up our hands in prayer, our hearts in thanksgiving and praise. Pattern our lives on the blessedness that Jesus taught and gather us with all the saints into your kingdom's harvest, that we may stand with them and clothed in glory, join our voices to their hymn of thanksgiving and praise. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. There is light in the darkness of grief. And there is light in the comfort of memory. There is light in the promise of a new tomorrow. My friends, this is the light of Christ. Bless this light that it might be a symbol of joyful memory. Bless us with thankfulness for lives well lived. Bless this light as it shines into lonely, painful, dark places. Bless us with your comfort and for healing of wounds, both hidden and seen. Bless the light we share as we come together. Bless us as we walk the path together towards our wholeness, towards healing and God's promise of peace. Blessed are you, comforting God, eternal creator of day and night, our light in the darkness and our companion in grief. Be with us now as we remember those we love, but see no longer. Make this time a touching place where heaven and earth are drawn together in the memories, the losses, and pain that we carry today. Help us feel your embracing grace and discern its light in our lives. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Holy word, holy wisdom. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Well, today we remember all the souls and all the saints. That is a huge amount of people. I don't know if you've ever really looked much into the lives of the saints, but there are literally thousands of them. And, and many of them are uh, sort of vetted through a process, at least in, in the Catholic Church and, and in other churches as well, where we sort of recognize when the church sees somebody uh, whose life has been well lived and who teaches us something about the faith. My favorite kinds of saints are, are those who are ancient, before uh, the church as an institution kind of got their hands on them. You know, before the medieval period, uh, saints were recognized by local communities. Indeed, uh, if you're in uh, our church, if you look off to sort of uh, stage left, I guess it is, there's a huge banner in the bump out where the, where the band usually keeps its equipment. There's this huge banner of St. Christopher. And, and it's a, a reminder to us of, of the veneration that we have of, of, of how we hold up uh, a particular person. 
Now, I know St. Christopher's was chosen uh, uh, in the history of this church because this church was built close to the highway. And St. Christopher is the patron saint of travelers. I'm not sure if you recognize that, but because we're close to the 403, that's why this church was named St. Christopher's. But if you, uh, ah, there you go. Thanks, Andy. Um, if you uh, recognize uh, this picture, St. Christopher's uh, is, is recognized um, because of his name. Christopher actually means Christ bearer. Christ Ofer is an old Greek name. Uh, and the, the idea is that St. Christopher was probably a, a giant of a man, at least that's part of the story, that he was huge, and that he was trying to figure out how he could serve Christ, even though he didn't know him. And so he um, sort of buckled himself down, disciplined himself to ferrying passengers back and forth across the river. And the tale is, is that at one point, uh, Jesus actually showed up, and Christopher was able to give him a ride. Uh, over uh, over the river, without even knowing who it was, he uh, became uh, recognized as someone who worked for Jesus and and was holy because of it. Now, if you if you get bored one afternoon, you can uh, Google Saint Christopher. There's all kinds of interesting uh, pictures of him on the internet. Uh, if you look up Saint Christopher, there's a bunch of odd pictures that you'll find of a man with a dog head. Uh, and it has to do, I guess, with the old idea of, of um, the spelling of the word for Christopher. Apparently in Greek, it's really close to dog-headed. Uh, and so there's all these old pictures of a saint-like picture carrying Jesus of, of a dog man. Uh, they're very bizarre, actually. And, and they sort of look like uh, a lot of, um, well, um, uh, you know, um, like in the sarcophaguses. Uh, in in uh, in Egypt, you'll you'll find lots of pictures that look exactly like it. Anyways, it's a bit of a a rabbit hole that you can get get lost in Saint Christopher's. He's an interesting character. Anyways, I sort of lost my train of thought there. Um, <laughs> what am I talking about? I'm talking about the Beatitudes today. That is uh, the scriptures that we heard. Thank you, uh, Janet, for, for reading those uh, for us. It seems like a little bit of an odd kind of a, uh, a scripture to hear on the day that we uh, call to mind uh, the passing of, of all the saints and, and indeed the souls that, that have walked before us. And yet I think there's, uh, there's something about it. There's some reason why, why uh, the church would put this bit of scripture before us. I think when we recall the saints, um, we think about those uh, people in our lives uh, and in our communities who have walked before us in faith, right? Ones who, who show us the way, who, who give us an example to, to follow. And I think maybe that's exactly what Jesus is trying to do in these Beatitudes. Remember last week we heard uh, Jesus talking about the greatest commandment. He had been challenged to sort of sum up the law in, in one thing. And of course, he, he never gives a straight answer. He gave us two answers. Right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and, and all your mind and, and love your neighbor as yourself. But these are commandments. These are, are things which we are required to do. They're regulations that, that sort of help form us, help form our identity and help us to, to understand who we are and, and how we fit in. I mean, if, imagine if we could live our lives just following those two greatest commandments, if everything that we did fit into that somehow. I think spiritual formation is exactly what's at, at the heart of all of this. I, I definitely think it's one of the things that, that we as church need to continue to work on, to be formed in the spirit. And, and so we, we need to take, uh, take a little bit of a moment and look at this bit of scripture. Because these are not commandments, they are blessings. And even though the Beatitude sort of fits into the the wider scope of, of the Sermon on the Mount. Remember, it's almost three uh, chapters that Jesus goes on and on and on and on about. But these are blessings. And we need to think a little bit about what that means for us. How are we blessed in this life? I mean, if for you, blessing is a simple sort of thing like, hallelujah, I got a parking lot at the mall, right? I, I got that close spot right up by the door, you know, praise God. If that's what a blessing means to you, then well, Okay, that's on one level, but maybe blessings are something more. And I think that's what Jesus is, is trying to get at. 
Indeed, he talks about uh, the sorts of, of people that are blessed in this bit of scripture, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Blessed even are those people who revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on Jesus' account. It doesn't seem like these people are blessed in their lives. Actually, they've got all kinds of things going on for them, all kinds of terrible things. And yet Jesus reminds us that these are the people that are blessed. You see, faith is a choice. Faith is uh, not just a personal sort of matter. It's not just a private thing. It's something that we as a community do together. It's something we hold together. And so we need to hold all of those people together. Whether you find yourself in that little list of people who are blessed, or even if you just walk with them, then the blessings come. They are there for us in our lives. For the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Those who mourn, they'll be comforted. Those who are meek, they'll inherit the earth. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they'll be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll be called children of God. Blessed who are those who are persecuted, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you. Rejoice and be glad, Jesus says, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Rejoice. Rejoice, my friends, when things go bad in our lives. Gather those people around, whether that's you in your own life, living day to day in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of all sorts of loss and grief and suffering. So many of us are feeling it right now. Jesus reminds us that we are blessed and so my prayer for you this day is that not only do you recognize that you are blessed in the midst of whatever is going on in your life, but that as a community, as a church, that we are called to be a blessing to each other. So let us go forward from this place, wherever we happen to be right now in our living rooms, in the kitchen table, sitting at a desk, whatever it is, how how will you be a blessing to others? That's the focus. That's the call that Jesus wants us to hear. Rejoice and be glad. For the kingdom of heaven is near. Amen. This is the house of the Lord. Ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come. You who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have never been before. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come, because it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power in the church, the world, and all in need. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, in the Niagara Diocese, we pray for the parish of St. Luke, Palermo. And in the worldwide Anglican communion, we pray for the church of the province of West Africa. In our silence, we pray. Eternal God, you hold us close even in death. Guard and keep those faithful departed. Bring the brokenhearted comfort and strength as they struggle to accept the empty chair. 
Allow them to leave their tears and every ache of the heart at your feet, that they may trust you with these realities and with these feelings and know that you are sovereign over all. Wrap them in your unending love with the assurance that they will be reunited in your greater glory. In our silence, we pray. Creator God, you've made all creatures great and small. Protect the species nearing extinction. Protect the animals, birds, fish, and butterflies in the midst of seasonal migration, whether it be by water, through the air, or over land. In our silence, we pray. Mothering God, you gave us life. Help us to care for the disadvantaged and marginalized, those who are helpless or persecuted, those who are hungry, alone, or suffering from mental illness. Help us to care for them as you would. In our silence, we pray. Provider God, you know the needs of your people. Embrace those who are reeling from the loss of their loved ones, the loss of their homes, or the loss of their livelihood, whether it be in the wake of this horrible pandemic or from the recent forest fires, hurricanes, floods, and tropical storms ravaging all corners of the planet. In our silence, we pray. God of justice, as our neighbors to the south prepare for the election of their leader, open their hearts and minds so that those who have not yet voted may do as Jesus would. Guide them to make the decision that will be right for their nation and ultimately for all of us. In our silence, we pray. God of peace, you rule the nations. When the powerful trample on the needy and take advantage of the poor, turn them from their selfish ways. Teach us how to be peace, not just to be at peace, but to become peace so that your peace can spread and that peace can come from being rooted both in the life of God and in the physical world. In our silence, we pray. Righteous God, Lead us to stand up for those whose human dignity has been denied and oppressed, especially our indigenous neighbors and people of color. Lord, we pray for a growing acknowledgement that racism exists in this country. Let us grieve that truth and let us advocate for change. We know that change starts with the heart. Please open the hearts of many so that we may see people the way you see people, that we may love people the way you love people. Give us the courage to defend those being bullied or teased and thereby tormented. Raise the voices of those who have been silenced and bring justice where power has been abused for personal gain. In our silence, we pray. God of mercy, Help us to forgive those who are unkind to us and to look for ways to show kindness to others. Help us recognize that times of injustice produce opportunities for conversation to talk about your grace, your mercy, and forgiveness. In our silence, Amen. we pray. Amen. Discerning God, guide the minds of our parochial committee as they continue the search for our new rector, we pray that they may find a faithful servant who will care for your people and support us in our ministries. In our silence, we pray. Assured by your promise to hear us, we lay our prayers before your throne of grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The, uh, the song today is actually an instrumental piece um, by accident. Um, I forgot to get a uh, recording of um, 
John Stephen and uh, Peggy Cardwell um, uh, singing for all the saints this morning. Um, so uh, I happen to have on my computer um, a file of me playing a piece called uh, Elegy um, by George Stalbin Ball. Um, I had recorded it uh, for inclusion in that uh, recital that's, uh, that's in a week. Um, but I wasn't planning on playing it here today. Um, so I, uh, I really hope that the video holds together. I was, I was editing it during the, the sermon, sorry, John. <laughs> There's an interesting story behind this piece. Um, uh, George Dalton Ball uh, used to play um, uh, even song services for the BBC radio uh, during World War II. Um, and, uh, and this piece is actually an improvisation that he did at one of those uh, radio services. And um, he had uh, uh, so much uh, letters written in about it um, that he, um, he uh, wrote the, the improvisation down. Um, so uh, don't judge on the um, quality of the video. I just hope that it works.
Thank you, Andy. That worked well, actually. The volume was a little quiet, but uh, it was beautiful to watch. Thank you. It always amazes me to watch him play, actually. If work two keyboards and the feet at the same time, I would fall flat on my butt. It's true. <laughs> it's an amazing talent. I'd just like to offer in prayer today before uh, we wrap up our service, uh, a bit of a memory. Every year at this time, we often gather in the afternoon for the All Souls service, and, and we pray specifically for those who have died in the past year. But I think more importantly, we've tried to lift up those folks uh, who are still struggling, still suffering. And so um, if you have uh, someone in mind that you would like to pray for, I just ask you to uh, call them to mind as, as we offer our prayers to God. On this day, we remember all those who have died and family and friends that you miss and that you see no longer. May we commit their memories to God this day as we remember him. O oh God, receive them into the arms of your mercy and remember them according to the favor that you bear for your people. In this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. This can be a difficult time for lots of people, a time of memory. The ancient Celts would say that this is the time when uh, the space between heaven and earth is at its thinnest, that you can actually see those people which we no longer see. And so I pray that uh, if you are struggling on this day, overwhelmed by emotions and memories, that you remember that God is present, that the Holy Spirit is here and with us because we follow in the name of Jesus. And I offer you God's blessing this day in the name of the one who created us, the one who redeems us, and the one who sustains us in this life and indeed forevermore. Amen. <laughs>